Hello guys, welcome to Saturday's episode. Enjoy the empty chair. We're gonna have uh, this guy on here today who hopefully you can kind of see here. My uh, male chrome head Sumatran short tail. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about different things today. It's gonna be a bit of a, a hodgepodge video of some opinions on stuff uh, that people ask me frequently. And we'll discuss him real quick first and at the end I'll uh, let him crawl around for a little bit. You guys can see him kind of on the ground in the sunshine. So what I want to talk about with him is this is uh, one of my male Sumatran short tails. Obviously I have quite a few. Uh, he is a chrome head. He is the father to the babies uh, that you guys have seen on the channel. Uh, but what I want to talk about, I, I got into it a little bit on the pet video because I believe I used him. But now when they're breeding, they get down and weight a little bit. So he is still just a little bit underweight. Um, not exactly ideal where I would like them. You see a little bit more spine definition than I'd want, and there's just a little bit less back here, um, which can happen when they're breeding. Uh, they don't pull off a of food, but I tend to slow them down on food, especially for the males. Um, overweight males just don't breed as well, uh, just the way it goes. But uh, this is something where if he was a pet, I would have a little bit more weight on him, and I am going to put a little bit more weight on him and then I'll slow him down again come fall. So right now, I'll move him to a schedule where he's eating two, maybe even three times in a month. Uh, whereas when it comes to breeding season, he might eat every four or five weeks. Uh, kind of just how I rotate them. Uh, the females, I do somewhat similar, I, not similar scheduling, but I do change them a little bit during the breeding season. And then obviously, once they ovulate, and I know they've ovulated, I don't offer food at all. Um, a few times I have had gravid females eat where I didn't realize that they had ovulated. Um, I even had one eat maybe about two weeks before she laid, maybe even closer, might have even been like 10 days. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't try to do that. Um, you know, it's just one of those things I don't want them to be trying to process food through there when they have all those eggs sitting in there. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to put a little bit more weight on him, say maybe uh, 10 to 15 percent above where he is right now at most. Uh, that might even be a bit generous. I would have to actually weigh him and, and figure it out, but I haven't weighed him to know. I can just look at him and see, you know, I want a little bit more weight on this guy. Otherwise, he's very healthy. Um, you know, fairly normal activity level. He uh, is, a, is a short tail, so unless there's food going on or something of interest outside of his cage, he pretty much doesn't move. Uh, outside, though, he will check it out a little bit, uh, things like that. Uh, as far as some other things that I wanted to talk about, uh, people ask a lot of questions, frequently the same questions over and over, uh, not just on YouTube, but on Facebook, on all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I'll just hit a few of those. Uh, first one I'll discuss is hybrids within snakes. People ask me all the time, or people are always wondering what people's opinions are of them. Uh, I am not a fan. To me, they are abominations. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Most of them are not attractive looking compared to the individual parent species. Uh, we have morphs, we have all kinds of different directions we can head with line breeding within a species. Um, we really haven't scratched the surface of what we're able to do with species themselves. So I don't know why people feel the need to bastardize stuff. And uh, I know that everybody always says that, oh, they'll represent them properly. But if you've ever been to a show, if you've ever been in any Facebook group ever, especially with short tails, time and again, there's ones for sale as pure that aren't. There's people showing off their new blood python that's not a blood python, or their new Borneo that's not a Borneo, or their new Sumatran that's not a Sumatran. It's a cross. Uh, they are distinct species. They are recognized as different species. They have been as such for about 20 years. So it's not like it's something that just happened. Um, but people still mix them together and they make very muddy looking, very ugly offspring, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. I've never seen one that's actually nice looking. I've seen some that are all right. Uh, so I just don't get why people do it. Uh, otherwise, with a lot of hybrid things, there's, there's other issues that happen that I'm not too fond of with fertility rates and things like that. And I'm aware that there can be bad fertility rates within a species, but if you're pairing up genetically strong animals, it's really few and far between that that happens. Uh, with my short tails, for instance, I think in, in six years or so, six or seven years of breeding them, I might have had 
uh, you know, half a dozen or, a, or 10 slugs total in all the clutches that I've produced. Um, whereas, you know, you see things like bat eaters where there's just a, a crap ton of slugs and duds and things that just don't work out or babies that fail to thrive. Um, as far as short tails go, very few babies have failed to thrive on me over the years. Um, it's, it's not all that common. I had one clutch last year that was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, and those babies seemed to do okay for a while and then, and then didn't. Um, but they are really small eggs from the jump and, and you know, it was a new, new morph that I was working with. And uh, so I'm not sure what direction I'll go with that project at this point. Um, but yeah, I, I like, uh, my, my goals are to make strong animals, healthy animals, pretty animals, animals that handle well so that people can enjoy them as pets. Uh, if that's their purpose uh, and even if they are breeders I still like to see people just in, enjoying their animals and spending time with them which is something I really like to do um, I don't get as much time to do that as I would like but uh, kind of making these videos is a decent opportunity and excuse for me to get out here with some of these guys and then spend a little bit of time afterwards when I'm when I'm done filming uh, and just hang out with them uh, so hybrids just really don't work into what my goals are um, and that's actually one of my greatest fears as a breeder is that somebody will use one of my animals and make hybrids with them And I would have to do a lot of soul searching at that point because that would really really bother me a lot I really screen people and if I notice people are trying to produce hybrids. I typically don't sell to them um, I just don't want to be a part of that. It's not something that I want to be a part of so I do what I can to avoid it um, and Then uh, obviously we did the egg cutting video so you know my opinion on that the enrichment video you can see my opinion on that um, other questions people always ask me with short tails is you know what what age and size do they need to be to breed size is really tough to put an, uh, an absolute amount on it really varies because this is a pretty small snake right here but he's a breeding male um, but he's got plenty of age. I forget what year he is. I want to say he's a 20, he's either a 2014 or a 2015. I don't remember. I would have to ask Kara since she produced him. Um, but he's plenty old enough for a male. And with males, generally speaking, if you do try to breed them a little early, the worst thing you're going to do is just not really have success. Um, in most cases, you're not going to harm them. Um, maybe their egos a little bit if they're too small and they get intimidated by the females um, but overall it's not too big of a deal females is a big deal uh, females age is more important and maturity is more important than size uh, that said you don't want to breed a tiny little female younger females and smaller females are gonna be more prone to issues just because of the way egg production works and what happens uh, but the maturity of their body is really what makes the difference and there's no specified timeline or, or wait for that. It really varies by animal and you have to use good judgment. Uh, absolute minimum that I would even ever consider pairing a female short tail up would be probably if she's going into the breeding season and she's going to turn four years old during that breeding season. So meaning if she was a, you know, like an April baby and it was October and so she's three and a half years old, I'll consider starting breeding her then if I feel that her body's in condition to do it, if I feel she has the maturity. Um, and maturity, we don't mean like um, maturity as far as personality. We mean maturity like sexual maturity. Their bodies, if their bodies are not done developing and they're still working on building those systems that are for egg production, and you put eggs through there, you put them at, at greater risk. Uh, now, does that mean that they don't breed early in the wild? No, it doesn't, but it also means that there's more complications in those animals in the wild as well, uh, and so it's not as good of an idea. Um, in, in the wild, they tend to take a little bit longer to grow up because of the amount that they, they eat, uh, so they're less likely to breed anyway. But uh, here, you know, everything's so perfect for them, sometimes they'll grow really quick, and their body looks mature, but it may not be on the inside. Uh, so you want to make sure ideally four years old plus uh, I've waited as long as six years with females if that's what I feel is ideal for them uh, Lilith was one such female where I waited until she was six. She's just a small girl now once I bred her She seems to have grown a little bit um, So now she's kind of a, a smaller to average size female, but she was really small the first time I bred her uh, But like I said, I waited six years. So she had plenty of age her body was mature 
she was giving me all the signs that she was building and, and wanted to breed and so I, I felt like it was the right time to try with her. Uh, there could be situations where I don't breed a female for eight years if that's what I feel it takes. Um, you know, it all varies by species, by snake, uh, but generally speaking, would I pair up a female that was under, say, like 10 pounds? Probably not, unless it was a really unique situation and she was super old and just clearly not gonna grow anymore, but there was nothing wrong with her. There are different lines of animals and different lines get different sizes. Uh, one day, hopefully, I'll get my big T-positive girl out here. I'll get one of my smaller T-positive adult females and just see the size difference between those two snakes that are both mature, proven females that have uh, you know, laid eggs and, and are five plus years old. So I'll do that at some point when I can. Uh, that'll be a cool video just to see how much they can vary. Um, and of course, at any time you guys are welcome to ask questions and I'll either try to address it right there on the thing or if it's something where I think it's, it's worth making a video out of, then I'll respond in that form and I'll let you know that just so you're not sitting there waiting for a reply. But I do appreciate all the people that comment on stuff and interact with the page, people that like, people that share especially, that's huge. I am trying to, uh, you know, I have some goals with the channel that I'd like to reach, so it would be really nice if, if people don't mind sharing videos that they like. Uh, even go back through and find certain ones that you like and share them. Uh, sometimes they may help in a group where somebody's asking a question. You can just link the video if it answers their question. I know some people are lazy and don't want to watch a video, they just want, you know, an immediate response, but hopefully you lead them to water enough times they'll start to drink. Um, as far as for this video, I'm trying to think what else people ask me all the time that I can cover. Um, people always ask me which of the three species is my favorite. I really like all three, um, but Sumatran shorttails probably get the nod for my favorite species. I love the super dark examples. I like the really nice chromes. Um, I like the patterns they have. I like that line breeding and quality uh, and the base is more important than morphs. There's not a bunch of morphs with these and so people that are getting these uh, are getting them because they have a passion for the species and they like how the species look somewhat naturally. Obviously with line breeding we are pulling them a little bit away from the wild type for specific things we want to isolate uh, but it's not a full-blown morph where you know these snakes can't go back into the wild and survive. If the snake was out in the wild, it would be able to do what it's supposed to do, you know, in theory, maybe not this particular animal because it's so used to captivity, but any of these snakes that we produce could, could live in the wild and, uh, you know, function as, a, as their wild counterparts do because they still have the camouflage they need. They can still blend in enough. They don't stick out too bad. Uh, so that's kind of stuff that I think is cool. Between Borneos and blood pythons, it gets a little more dicey. I like them each for individual things. Borneos are my favorite to breed without a uh, shadow of a doubt, just because they're so polygenic and you just don't know what a given clutch is gonna produce. And even once you produce with that same pairing, you do it again and you can get different results. So that keeps it fresh and exciting. Um, you know, you put the same pair of chromes together every year, you kind of more or less know what you're gonna get with the same pair of darker animals, you more or less know what you're gonna get. You get some variance within a clutch and some variance season to season. Uh, but Borneos, by and large, it's, it's just crazy what you can produce. And if you have an eye for it, it's really, really fun because you start to see the fruition of all kinds of projects. As far as blood pythons, who can argue with really nice red snakes? Um, as far as morphs go, T-positive is my favorite morph, uh, hands down. I just love what T-positive does with everything. Um, I've never seen a T positive anything that disappoints me. I mean, uh, there's individual T positives that are not top tier, high quality, but I just feel like T positive doesn't ever ruin the, the, the morph that it goes into. Like T positive golden eye is amazing. T positive boutique is amazing. Uh, T positive matrix, T positive ivory. I like, I like all of that stuff. Um, so I, I, I very much, the T positive uh, lily stuff looks really cool too. I don't have any of that. Uh, hopefully someday I will because I do kind of enjoy that a little bit and I want to see what I could do with that with some of my projects. Uh, but I just, I just like what T-Positive does. And uh, personality-wise, always these guys, Bloods and Borneos, uh, I find to be pretty similar in personality. Um, bloods, by and large, I, I find can be moodier, meaning even a great blood can have more bad days. I don't see bad days in my Sumatrans really ever, to be honest. Uh, on occasion, 
you know, a female that wants to breed and hasn't bred yet can be a little uh, more irritable and, you know, the worst they do is kind of just shove you off when you go to pick them up. Uh, and the Borneos are definitely the most dramatic of the three species. Uh, they flop around the most, they're the most apt to just, you know, all of a sudden decide a situation is, is somewhat stressful. And that doesn't mean there's not individual Borneos that are bomb proof and individual Sumatrans that can be reactive. Uh, that's just an overall in my experience with, you know, the few hundred of them that I've been around. Um, you know, other people might have a different experience with their one or two or three or whatever or their collection. Uh, but that's just what I found in my observation with them. How you doing, buddy? Uh, so we'll get this guy on the ground so you guys can see him uh, just kind of chilling a little bit, doing what short tails do. So let me throw him down and uh, grab the camera here. We'll uh, move you down here to scope him out. Like I said, he is the father to the babies that have been on the channel, along with Sambuca, who I'm hopefully gonna get on here soon. Um, she's just not really been uh, where I wanna get her on film right now. She just hasn't been fired up much lately and she looks so nice fired up that I wanna wait until I catch her on the right day. And uh, I am gonna prep her as if I am gonna breed her this season. Um, she is getting up there in age, so I do usually give her a decent amount of time off between clutches. Um, but she still wants to breed. Her last clutch was 20 good eggs, everything hatched. Um, she didn't, I think she might have thrown one slug. So I definitely don't feel that, uh, you know, her body feels like it's time to, time to call it quits yet. And she's only in her mid-teens, so she's not ancient. Um, you know, I have Ethel, who I might breed once more, and Ethel's 18, so... We'll see how it goes. I kind of let them dictate when they're done or what, you know, how they're feeling. Um, I do sometimes have to stop them for the betterment of themselves. Um, Sam Buka's wanted to breed a couple times that I, uh, I said, no, you're not breeding this year. And she gets a little moody and you just let her kind of, kind of have her mood swings. Uh, as you can see, short tails are not the most exciting snakes outside. Uh, it's pretty general what they do. You do get some that'll be a little bit more uh, into exploring around them but uh this guy is usually pretty chill he's usually one to pretty much stay where he's at eventually he might uh move around a little bit periscope a little bit but uh usually it takes him takes him a while move a little try to encourage him to move <laughs> easier said than done you can see how well that worked now he's just watching me giving me the stink eye like what's your problem bro Change this a little and give me a second here. Put you down there so you can get on the get on the level with him. His eyes are, are kind of unique um, for my chrome stuff. Sometimes you'll look and they'll have that hint of orange, and then sometimes they're more like Sambuca. Sambuca has a real silver eyes. Um, his are kind of somewhere in between. Like when I first brought him out here, they were pretty orange. So I don't know with him if he adjusts a little bit more to the lighting. Than some of my others most of my others that are orange stay orange and the silver stays silver but he seems to be the most likely to be somewhat in between uh, but you can see the pattern he's got a little bit more brown than would be ideal for me uh, which is why i'm pairing him up and i'm trying to get some holdbacks for the future that will be a little bit darker along the body but still have that nice chrome and still fire up nice and I'm also hoping to get a little bit more chrome down the body there, you know, where you see kind of the, the brownish hues there. I'd like that to be a little bit more silver. So those are my goals with this stuff, um, with my chrome line, which I'm working towards. I've got a baby that I'm holding back from this past clutch of, of theirs that I think is gonna be a really nice male for the future. And I have another male that I bred uh, from Sambuca and Tux a couple years ago that I also think is pretty nice. Uh, so he might get a shot eventually. We'll see what happens. But for now, I'll cut that short. Uh, I just wanted to do a video on a couple of different things. Get him outside, let you guys check him out in some natural light with that chrome head. He's not fully fired up, but he's, he's pretty good. Um, so you can see, let me move him behind him here, hopefully not annoy him too much. You can see he's pretty chrome right now, uh, but he does get more chrome than that. And actually he does get pretty dark at times too. He, uh, not, you know, like an incognito or anything, but he'll get to where that head is a really, really dark gray. 
Uh, Sambuca does the same, but he really goes extreme to extreme, uh, which is a really cool thing to see. Uh, so we will see you guys this week. Uh, as always, like, share, comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, always welcome on any input that you have. Also, this week coming up, check out, uh, I was on the uh, a guest on the Reptile Gumbo podcast yesterday. Uh, that should be out within the next couple of days. Uh, they don't shoot it live, they, they do it after. So I think we had a pretty decent podcast. I had a few drinks, so the whiskey did a little talking. Uh, so you guys might enjoy some of that. Thank you as always. We'll see you.